Do you think it's beneficial to get a child um, talking about this before they show signs of the anxiety so that they know that in addition to their close family core and people that they do trust, that there's somebody else? Because um, as a parent, that's mm -hmm. one of my concerns is that, you know, I try to, on the one hand, say, it's no biggie that you can't have that. You know, I'll say, no biggie, you know, we've got this. You've got this wonderful snack or something. But at the same time, I don't want to downplay, you know, and say that the allergy isn't no biggie because it's life-threatening. Mm -hmm. And he's so little that, you know, I haven't seen anything. Um, How old is he? He's two and a half. He's two and a half. So okay. this is yeah, he's his first time in preschool, his first time away from me and my cooler with all of his food in it and, mm. you know, going someplace else. And he's a quiet, introspective little guy. And um, when I spoke to the teachers, I said, he's the little guy that if something was wrong, he might just slump down in the corner and never say anything. He's not going to come up and mm. tug on you. But at the same time, you know, I try to tell him that if you need help, you need to call out and ask for it, whether you're swimming and you, you're, you're getting too deep mm -hmm. or, you know, you're eating something and it doesn't feel right. But, you know, he's just two and a half. So I think to myself, maybe somebody else has better tools to teach him things um, or it might just be good for him to form a relationship with somebody other than myself that he can trust to talk to. Yeah, I mean, that can be very helpful. Uh, at his age, books are wonderful. So um, I know there, there was a mom who was trying to teach her toddler about their food allergy. So she came up with um, Peter can't eat peanuts. Um, and she he came up with this bedtime you know, story for him. But so that's very helpful for toddlers um, is to teach them about their allergies is to use books. Um, or music, so there's a 26, I don't know if he's 26 anymore, but they, a musician that has food allergies and he wrote a CD um, and he developed the superhero Epi Man. Um, and so he sings about it. So those tools are wonderful. As far as in talking to your child, this is very, very important because we often say, how was your day? Good. Uh, what did you do today? Nothing. Um, who'd you sit next to? Sally. Okay, um, in order to explore their feelings more, we want to ask more open-ended questions. So what was the best part of your day? What was the worst part of your day? And I talk, um, one thing that I suggest is having a family meeting, not focus on the allergies, but just a general family meeting once a week to say, oh, you know, what went well this week? Um, you know, just what was the best part? What was the worst part of your week? What was the most exciting activity that you did? Um, did you feel unsafe at all? So you can incorporate these questions without hyper-focusing on the allergy themselves to explore how they're feeling. Now, when a child says, well, it's not fair, I can't have that, we do often, you know, we just tend to want to fix things right away. So we you know, have, do have a tendency to say, well, yes, but you can have this, or how about we go do this? And really what is most important is to validate the feelings first. So. Yeah, I hear that that's really frustrating that you can't have the same cupcakes or I know that that makes you mad or that makes you feel sad. So really um, being able to validate that they're feeling this way because otherwise that's where they learn to, and, and this isn't just with children with food allergies, population as a whole, we learn to stuff those feelings down um, because either feeling like someone doesn't understand or Sometimes it sends a message, I shouldn't feel that way. So a lot of times I hear parents, and, and it's not a, a, a negative, it's just sometimes we send these underlying messages. So I often hear parents in my office say, I just want you to be happy. And when I, I'm talking to the parents, I explain to them that I hear that, and I see that, and I think your child knows that 100% that you want them to be happy. But when we send that message, we're saying it's not OK to feel sad sometimes, or it's not OK to feel frustrated or angry. So we want to validate their feelings first and say, yeah, you know, buddy, I know that this is really frustrating sometimes. And then say, well, what, what do you need from me? Or what can we do? Um, and, and so. Because two pieces, you know, is to validate the feelings. Sometimes we have to get creative in our, our answers then. Um, but it also helps give them a sense of control. And that's a really big piece with, with food allergies, is having some sense of I have control over whether I take cupcakes or cookies to my friend's party. Um, 
and that can really make a difference. And, and the reality is, is that when 15 other kids are eating cake and I can't have the same cake, I might wonder what it's like. Or if I have a dairy allergy and kids are eating ice cream or you hear about ice cream all the time and I can't have it, um, you know, I might wish, oh, I just wish I was normal. That's what children often say. We talk about how, well, what is normal? You know, I'd, I don't eat gluten. If and that's normal for me. And I don't want the other foods because they don't make me feel well. So, you know, we, we talk about that with kids too, that, you know, when we say the words, well, they're normal. Well, you know, what is normal? So let's talk about what our normal is. Um, so, but, you know, sometimes outside sources are helpful just because a child, sometimes children don't want to make mommy or daddy feel bad. Um, and so when they're using another person, um, they can say what they feel and then get support and how to, to talk about it. So sometimes that happens um, because, you know, I know it's very frustrating as a parent and in studies show that, you know, more, I think the studies they did were more so with moms, but that the stress levels of a mom with a child with food allergies was significantly higher than a parent who doesn't have a child with food allergies. Um, and it can trickle down sometimes. So, you know, support is just important. So sometimes, you know, whether it's support for your child or even, you know, sometimes just support as this group is, you know, wonderful group is, is support for yourselves too.